Hey, it's Rick. Welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be making this engraving hammer. Now, there's a lot of guys on YouTube who make engraving videos and who have videos on how to make equipment for engraving. Uh, the one guy who really inspired me to start engraving or to try engraving was Yuri Tuckman. I'll put a link to his YouTube channel down in the description. He's got some pretty amazing stuff. He's not an engraver, uh, but he does make some really, really cool things. So check that one out. Now, what I started with here was a photograph I found online of an actual manufactured hammer, something you can buy from someone. I think the handle is synthetic. I don't think it's actually wood. Um, the dimensions I discovered that I could figure out, the hammer face is roughly an inch in diameter, and it should weigh roughly one to one and a quarter ounces. I've pulled the image into Modo, which is what I use for 3D modeling, and I'm just building over top of it. What I want to do is 3D print an actual hammer, just so I can hold it in my hand and see what it's going to feel like, see if the length is right, see if it looks about right or feels right. I've never actually seen one of these in real life. I've only seen pictures of them online. I don't know where I would even find one locally. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't. I'd have to order it from someplace. So I wanted to see what it was actually going to feel like before I got into the effort of lathing the head and sculpting and shaping and carving the handle. It seems like a lot of work for a prototype, and I do not want this to turn into a prototype situation where I've got to make like five of them to get a good one, because that's a real waste of time. It's better off at that point to just buy one. So here I'm working in ZBrush. Uh, I prefer that for organic modeling. I'm just sort of pushing and pulling. Pretty, uh, you know, not very clean. I'm not, I don't care about the polys or anything. So this is the final 3D model that I'm going to print on my FDM printer in black PLA. And here's the final print. You can see how skinny the handle actually is. Now maybe if this were going to be a synthetic handle, if I actually made a mold and poured a solid material into it, maybe that would be good enough. But for wood, I'm going to have to make that handle thicker because that's going to break for sure. This is what the head looks like according to the dimensions that I found online. I did a little bit of math while I was modeling it to figure out the volume, therefore how much it was going to weigh out of steel, and that's how I arrived at this final dimension. So I'm going to use these when I take it to the lathe and make a model of it. So here I'm working on my lathe. I've got a piece of metal. I'm not even sure what this is. It came out of my scrap bin. It's probably just mild steel. I'm not using anything special. I don't think it's anything special. It doesn't cut very well though. I'm using a carbide cutter on it. I'm getting a lot of uh, smoke and a lot of chips that won't break, but my feeds and speeds are probably not set correctly. I'm not really much of a machinist. I am an illustrator by trade, so I'm kind of just winging this as I go. Because of how far it sticks out, I've had to use a live center in the back here. And because of that, I'll have to make that stem much longer than it needs to be so that when I round over the end of it, you don't see the hole where the live center used to be. I could probably do some of these angles with a form tool, uh, actually grind a high-speed steel cutter to make that sort of curved shape as it gets towards the flat head of the hammer. But again, that's more work than I want to get into. I'm just doing this quick and dirty to get it done so I can move on to the next thing. I've still got to make the actual graver, and I'm thinking about making a uh, like a ball vise kind of thing rather than buy one.
So I've removed the live center so that I can work on the end now. And I'm just going to stair step the end rather than... I do have an actual ball turning attachment, but you've got to take part of the cross slide apart to mount it. And again, I just don't feel like putting that kind of effort into this. So I'm going to stair step it with the cutter and then finish it off with a file. This video should be titled The Lazy Man's Guide to Machining. I have to cut down a pretty far way here to get rid of that hole where the live center used to be. After watching Yuri Tuckman do this stuff on his lathe, he's converted a, uh, a sewing machine into a lathe. He does most of his stuff freehand. He doesn't even really have a cross slide. It's almost using it like a wood lathe, but carving brass and metal with it. So I've moved over to the mill. I have put this in a 5C collet in this spin index, and I'm just going to put flat spots on either side. I realized after I've weighed it that I've still got too much metal here, and it weighs closer to two ounces than the weight that I want to get, which is about one and a quarter. Now, unfortunately, when drilling this hole, my digital readout on the mill has decided to stop working. I don't know why. I'm going to have to figure that out. But because of that, I couldn't use it to detect the edges and then find the center, so I just visually scribed a line and then went for it. Uh, you can see the hole is actually a little bit offset, unfortunately, but thinking about it, uh, after I did it, I don't think that that's going to work. Like a round hole, you would think the hammerhead would spin on the handle if you had a round handle and a round hole, so I've decided to go back with the mill and some files and actually elongate that hole and turn it into more of an irregular oval, really. I kind of screwed up again with the, uh, the mill when I was going in there. Again, once you rely on a DRO for a lot of stuff, uh, it's hard to work without it. Especially when you're hitting 50 and your eyes don't really work at that range anymore. Now, the weight on this, a little bit over, 1.3 ounces. I was aiming for one and a quarter, but I think that'll do. So I got this stick of, I believe it's Poplar, from a big box store, hardware store. Um, I think it was about 10 bucks. It's not probably the right wood to use for a hammer handle, but this hammer is not going to be under a lot of stress. It's a very tiny hammerhead and you're only using it to engrave something. So I'm going to use half of this piece to make the handle for the hammer, and then the other piece I can use to make graver handles. I think I read somewhere that you should be using something like a, a fruit wood, like an apple wood or something, for these kind of hammer handles. They're more flexible, apparently. They say that in an engraving hammer, unlike a regular hammer where the head does all the work, in the engraving hammer it's the handle that does all the work. And it's supposed to have a little bit of spring to it, so that every time you hit the graver, the head sort of bounces back, and it means that you have to do much less effort with your arm and your wrist, avoiding repetitive wrist strain and arm strain. So I cut it out here on my metal cutting bandsaw. Uh, you can see it's left a lot of metal shavings and stuff. The bandsaw is pretty filthy, so it's not great for cutting wood. Uh, now I'm using a flap disc on my angle grinder, and that did a remarkably good job. I've never actually used this before for shaving down wood, but... Uh, it really does a good job smoothing it out. The job now is to get the end of this handle to be just sized well enough to fit as snugly as possible into the hammerhead. You really don't want to undersize this or you're going to have nothing but problems. You'll have to use a ton of epoxy, uh, which I'm going to use anyway to epoxy the head on, but you don't want it loose and sloppy if possible. You want it to be a nice press fit. So this is the important part to get this first, and then I can work on the rest of shaping the handle. 
I've decided that it's all still pretty thick and it's kind of chunky, so I'm using this 40 grit sandpaper to just tear it down and smooth it out a bit. And then I'll move on to an 80 grit on a regular sander and then I'll move on to a 200 grit to make it finer still. I used a 15 minute mid cure epoxy. I didn't want to use like a five minute and have it cure too fast. I wasn't sure how long it was going to take me to actually get the head onto the handle. I did cut, uh, cut a slot in the end of the handle with a hacksaw blade so that I could uh, drive this little metal wedge in that I ground up. And I probably could have made a wooden wedge uh, based on what I've seen others do with handles, but I was on a metal roll and thought I'd just keep going with this. So once everything's been cut and trimmed, and I think it's looking about as good as it's going to get, I've decided to give it a coat of Minwax wood stain, and then a couple coats of a polyurethane. I just used a Minwax clear satin polyurethane, giving it about four or five coats, letting it dry maybe 12 hours between coats, and then sanding between coats. And here's the final hammer. I think it's going to work pretty good for my purposes, but time will tell. Uh, it's not perfectly straight, and it's certainly not a great job, but again, I am not a hammer maker. If you've liked this video or found it informative, click the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching.